Hello all, this is Dr. Dheeraj Masapu. I am a senior consultant in the field of Neuroanesthesiology and in this video I would like to cover how to prepare for first year in MD Anesthesia, the books that you need to read and you know, how to select the thesis and uh, some of the online resources are coming up like you know YouTube videos are there in certain ISA chapters and uh, they are pretty good and awesome and uh, there are attack platforms so I would you know rate all these uh, particular online resources also in this particular video so let's start the video without any time waste so before going into the books uh, the most important thing I would like to tell you I'm you know mentoring you know, some people uh, in a month around five to six people in a month and uh, even though my schedule is very busy I'm trying to keep myself free for four to five slots and then the link is there in the description so that into the you know essential books that you need to read in the first year so number one book is Morgan and Mikhail clinical anesthesiology so that is a basic book you have to read from uh, you know end to end you have to start reading that from the first year so from day one actually you have to start reading this book and uh, this is the main book you know you can actually read before your exams also so that is the most important thing it's not easy to read this book it is pretty tough only so it's better to start reading from beginning and then the next uh, book is the drugs there are a lot of drugs in anesthesia okay vipin kumar dama is uh, you know being rated as the best book in this area many of you know people whom i inquired told this is one of the best books and then uh, if you the standard book in uh, uh, pharmacology Stoltings. So Stoltings Pharmacology and Physiology in Anesthesia is a must read book for all the drugs and everything. So one of these you can select and then you can read this. Okay and then coexisting diseases. So like all the comorbidities you have to deal right. So that Stoltings uh, is a separate book is there called Stoltings Anesthesia and Coexisting Diseases. So these are the main books. Apart from this there is a reference book called as Miller's Anesthesia so in uh, this book you know it is nobody can finish this book completely but certain uh, you know topics are dealt uh, very well like thoracic anesthesia and all that so you can buy if you have a soft copy that is enough but rest of the books i think you should buy hard copies and then start reading and uh, millers you can keep as a reference book and certain topics you can read so that is what i read uh, you know thoracic anesthesia and cardiovascular monitoring the arterial trace monitoring you know is like awesome in this book and even the neuro part would be pretty decent in this book even though for neuro there is a separate book called as quarter and patel quarter and young and then yamahimanshu prabhakar and those books are there but it doesn't uh, make sense to read all that in the md time and uh, if you're planning a dm or a fellowship i think uh, there you should read all these books okay for you know, these books are enough actually for MD anesthesia to pass the examination. Even if you read well, you'll get a gold medal actually. Okay. And then anesthesia equipment. Uh, anesthesia is a kind of speciality where a lot of equipment would be there. Like anesthesia machines, ventilators and all that you have to read. So, you know, there are a lot of physics and physics and physics involved. So, there are certain books. When I was studying, Dosh and Dosh was the only book. But now, many people are preferring uh, Baha Al-Sheikh, Essentials of Anesthesia Equipment. And Bahayati's Basics of Anesthesia Equipment. These two books are pretty... A simple and then uh, easier to read than Dorsh and Dorsh. So one of that you can choose. And uh, okay, the uh, uh, names of the books and everything I'll keep in the description so that you will not have any confusion. Okay, so that's about equipment. For ICU, if you ask me what is the best book, then I will go for uh, for mechanical ventilation. Chang's uh, uh, clinical application of mechanical ventilation is good, and Paul Merino the ICU book. So these books you can read for ICU. Okay. So these are for MD level, for DM and fellowship level, there are so many books, but these books are enough. They are basics and then they cover most of the aspects. Okay. Apart from this, review articles uh, you have to read concerning to the, that particular topic. Okay. So these kind of things I can cover uh, in the mentoring sessions. Okay. Then these are about the books, right? Then let us go into the thesis topic, how to select a right thesis topic. So here I would like to tell you, uh, before you select the thesis topic, what you need to understand is, first one month try to analyze what kind of cases are happening in your hospital. So what is the strength of the hospital? Like some hospitals have the strength of cardiac, like Narayan Rodhyala in Bangalore. Cardiac would be more in number. It makes sense to do a thesis around that. Okay. And uh, some place like you know, Manipal would be doing a lot of spine cases. A thesis around that would be good. And then a center like, you know, ours doing a lot of brain cases. Around that you should 
you know tailor and uh, get your thesis around that you should understand what the strength of the particular center if you're doing a general stuff like laparoscopic uh, cholecystectomy hernias and hydrocele and then you can um, do anywhere between regional blocks and you know decreasing post operative pain and some area like that so what i'm trying to tell is try to understand what kind of cases are happening because there can be a very good topic with that case is not there in your particular hospital It doesn't make sense right so number one is that number 2 is once you choose the topic you should also align with your mentor's interests for example your thesis guide has an interest and already a preset idea in his mind whatever you select wouldn't <laughs> uh, you know be, he wouldn't like that so what you have to do is if he if he tells you to find 10 papers and then uh, try to find try to understand his area of interest and try to get around that area and he will usually choose one of them if it's a pain specialist try to get around different types of blocks and everything and they would select usually one of them and my recommendation is to find a knowledge gap see now ai is there you can put your thesis in that and ask find a knowledge gap it will give you a knowledge gap by going through lot of research articles not gpt for that there is a special uh, gpt called as scholar gpt and uh, another there is another gpt called as consensus gpt so i i will explain all those things to you uh, you know in future uh, videos so these uh, gpts are loaded with research articles so what happens is when you ask for a knowledge gap they go into the databases and they find knowledge gap so why do you need a knowledge gap basically in future if you want to publish that particular thesis a knowledge gap is required because i am a reviewer for four different journals so the first thing that we would see is whether this study has been done before or not so if the study is already done before it wouldn't be published so that all depends upon the knowledge gap so if there is a knowledge gap then you need to focus on that particular area and a simple way to understand knowledge gap is going through the meta analysis systematic reviews in that particular area in the end of the meta analysis you are supposed to write the future scope for research so in that way also actually you can find a very good thesis topic so that is about uh, thesis topic the most popular areas of thesis are airway management regional blocks and uh, you know different invasive monitoring techniques and these are the different uh, areas where nsrs usually do thesis you can do in any of this area you don't have to copy from your senior thesis and you don't have to repeat the whole thing you can do a new one that much you can do so this is about uh, preparing yourself with the books and the thesis and everything next so uh, equipments wise if you ask me you should first Six months, you should finish reading about the anesthesia machine, and you know vaporizer circuits, and you know different gas flows and physics and everything, and then different monitors like how the ECG works, SPO2 works, ETCO2, and uh, you know neuro monitoring like base and entropy and all that how they work, and then ventilators understand the volume control, ventilation, pressure control, different modes of ventilations and all that. So all these things you have to learn in the first six months. So let's come to the online resources. So before coming to online resources, I would like to tell you that. there are uh, at present what i'm seeing is a uh, three different platforms present in the market number one is maro number two is the um, ra online and number three is the conceptual anesthesia these three uh, edtech platforms are serving anesthesia students so i am part of the maro so if i tell maro is the best there will be some kind of a bias right so what i will tell is i have gone through some of the classes in all these things so what i observed is maro is more like a structured content for uh, covering around 300 hours and then it is more uh, because since uh, i got deeply involved in the curriculum making of this so they are covering the basics and they're going into procedures and different procedures also they they made the uh, people are presenting uh, you know uh, present different procedures like i presented in icp monitoring i presented a class on transcranial doppler or all the ad advanced things in neuroanesthesia like that um, you know regional anesthesia guy would have presented in some other areas where of his uh, this thing so both practical and theory are covered in maro so uh, and also it is a kind of a super specialty training platform so a lot of for exams and you know mcq sessions and all that would come as a part of it and since you guys already uh, are used to using maro for your you know neat pg preparation maybe maro would make more sense to you is what i thought that's why captain number 1 ra online is also uh, ra online is purely the work of one uh, anesthesiologist Uh, dr ranjit and then uh, it even uh, this has evolved over you know years and years and years so the 
there is a lot of uh, content here thousands of videos are there in raw online so i don't know whether you can finish all the videos but any topic you uh, try to you know type in the search of raw online you would get that so in that way it is a superior uh, you know i think uh, uh, database for all the types of classes it's more like a ppt presentation a person will be sitting a ppt would be going on so maro would be more like you know well uh, uh, curated content so well edited well edited i have to say even though that is not our priority our priority is more about what is there inside the thing so both of these platforms uh, depends upon your um, you know capacity to go through if you want only 300 hours of structured content then mara would be a good option and uh, if you want a very big database then raw online is a good option okay if you want to look see me then mara is a better option concept analysis is also a very good uh, platform so here um, what they're trying to do is uh, different uh, uh, clinical aspects and uh, practical aspects they're covering as podcasts and everything so even this is a very good platform so what you guys can do is to take the advantage of all the three maybe three three friends can pull up and then one can take maro one can take raw online one can take conception anesthesia the same class you see in all the platforms so you get a detailed understanding so that you wouldn't miss any, miss any points and then that would be a better way of uh, you know a reading so that uh, you know all, i want all the three platforms to survive because some kind of you know uh, competition should be there and also uh, it is better in the longer run so coming to the youtube channels what i feel is um, see nicera has a youtube channel and then that is very good for regional anesthesia and nicera also has a website where lot of uh, free content is there so if you want to learn regional anesthesia nicera is the go to area you don't have to go to any other site admin hadzik is the you know founder of nicera and coming to individual youtube channels what i observed is isa kerala chapter is doing a lot of webinars and then uh, you know case presentations and lot of classes they have done nearly i think up to 300 to 400 classes i have seen all are like good quality so isa nashik also has done a lot of you know work in this area okay and uh, these two i think you should follow before going to your practical exam because a lot of case presentations are there in these two uh, youtube channels okay and then if you want to uh, understand uh, international view point how american anesthetists uh, uh, you know have their schedules uh, how the day in the life would look like max feinstein is another um, youtuber and american he has a youtube channel even i follow him so you can actually look at his videos he does a very good uh, you know youtube videos he has i think lakhs of followers and karthik also has a channel he is work he is a consultant in aig hospital so we collaborated uh, you know in multiple videos you would have seen so he has a youtube channel where he explains you know different types of topics like different iv line insertions and then he covers he is very passionate about teaching the equipment and the basics of anesthesia he did a lot he did a lot of classes and then uh, my channel is also important for career growth so my genre is different so i don't take individual uh, uh, cases or sorry i don't teach individual uh, concepts what i tell you is how to grow in career and then what are the in- my different uh, pathways to go to other countries and then uh, like these kind of videos where you know what are the different um, areas you have uh, you know each in each specialty is what uh, i would be covering and uh, best hospitals and all those kind of videos i do because others are not doing are not covering that area so because even if i start uh, you know taking classes in you know all these kind of subjects then um, it do, doesn't serve the purpose i think that is why i try to you know keep my channel little separate uh, which will only focus upon the career growth of uh, uh, different doctors initially started with anesthetists but now lot of other specialty people also are following my you know advices and everything so i'm keeping it more general now and how to grow in career and different uh, hospitals and all the things i'm covering so that's about uh, different channels and uh, in facebook uh, the anesthesia society is a very active society where uh, if you are part of this society the advantage is if you have some tough case tomorrow you can post actually in this group and some seniors would come and solve your problems and research updates and guidelines and if you want to go to other countries also they would help 
So, Dr. Shiv is the head for uh, the Anesthesia Society and they even conduct conferences called as TAS, and con the Anesthesia Conference and all that. So, these are the different uh, Facebook groups. And our ISA also has started one podcast, um, recently started following and uh, even that is good. Okay, Dr. Murli Thondebhavi sir is doing that. He is from Bangalore. So even if you follow such kind of podcasts also where you know, he interviews different people for the benefit of anesthesiologists, they are doing that. So these are the different uh, platforms. So intensive care, if you ask me, if you are planning to write EDIC in future, then uh, Arish masterclass is uh, better because uh, it is a well-structured training and the success rate for passing EDIC is very high. And then um, that is about uh, the ICU training. ICU EdTech uh, platform and then uh, coming to EDAC, EDAC there is no separate uh, platform in India, maybe I only have to make in future, if, if you guys really want me to make, I don't have time to make any courses I have to say, so even to mentor, do this mentoring session actually, max, <laughs> 4 to 5 slots is the maximum I am having in a month, so EDAC is one thing, if nobody is doing, I might start doing. Because uh, it is a need of the hour. Many people are actually asking me how to prepare for a diet, what are the books to a diet and all that. If somebody can make a structured course, then it will be beneficial is what I feel. If you want me to make, then a comment in the comment section. I will try to do it in one, two years. So, this is about, uh, you know, different things. But six-month strategy I made, you can see here. How in the first six months, what you need to do is, first learn pre-anesthesia assessment first. Okay, as an anesthesiologist. And then... What you do is, you master techniques like master the spinal anesthesia, master intubation, ILMA insertion, IGL insertions and all that. Start eating Morgan and Mikhail and basics of drugs from uh, Vipin Kumar, Dama. Okay, till this is the first one to two months. And then about thesis, try to understand what is the thesis selection, what is the literature review, identifying knowledge gaps and all that. Just go through YouTube videos or use chat GPT and try to learn all those things. And three to four months, what you do is, you uh, read about post-operative pain management, post-anesthesia care uh, in different books, try to read them. Learn ventilator basics from Chang's mechanical ventilation. Finalize a thesis topic. By first three months, you have to finalize. And then uh, you follow NISORA websites and ISR webinars and all that. So I know doing all these things along with your clinical work is very difficult. Sir, we don't have time, that is what you tell. If you are such kind of a person, please don't follow my <laughs> channel. You have to put extreme level of hard work. You have to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, do all these things and then exercise and then go to work. This is what I recommend. Okay. And then 5 to 6 months, you once you develop confidence in uh, in the place, once you become a little familiar in the place, then uh, you know uh, you know gain more hands-on experience in anesthesia, machine troubleshootings, ventilator adjustments according to the patient needs, the and uh, ethics and uh, scientific committee, ethics committee, and all those approvals you have to start getting for your theses, regular ISA webinars, and then um, all the updates you get in all these platforms which, which I told you. So these are the uh, you know things that you need to do. This should be a strategy in the first six months. Okay, so this is about, uh, you know, different books and YouTube videos and then attack platforms and everything in anesthesia. I think um, I covered most of it. And uh, if you really uh, have come till this part of the video, I think you should subscribe to the channel and join the mentoring session so that uh, you, you can sit, I can sit one-on-one -on -one with you and explain all these things in a better way. Okay, thank you very much for following the video. Till the end, as usual, Dr. Dheeraj Masapu logging off, Roger that.